Today on this old house, through lockdowns, travel restrictions, and material delays, Jeff and his team have persevered for the past year here in Narragansett. Our Queen Anne Victorian is almost ready to take a bow. What happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. It's really the classic plumber's lament. Nice. It's five bathrooms, it's a kitchen, it's a full new mechanical. It's, it's going to be a big one. Sounds like you guys have a plan. I think we do. <laughs> the money's in the detail. That is beautiful. Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to this old house where we are down to our final episode here on the Narragansett project and let's face it fellas it has not been an average year. <laughs> this has been an uphill climb with COVID it has been unbelievable you know Rhode Island is one of the toughest states for restrictions so we had to work around that. Jeff's guys had to stay off the project for a long period of time. It's really been an uphill climb really a hard project because of COVID. Yeah and with all that going on not only is the labor cost up but the estimated cost for lumber on the average house today, they estimate it to be $10,000 more than it was before. The Just for the pandemic. lumber. Yeah. yeah. We've got the delays, we've got the extra costs, and then you got us. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're extra bodies to the reduced crews on the job site, yeah. and we've got to get tested before every film oh, day. Oh, boy. You add it all up, and as you say, a tough year, but delays. Yeah. Um, and so the project's not 100% done. Jeff's got a short punch list, but it's not going to stop the homeowners from moving in. They closed on their house. It is sold. They're moving into this house this week. And uh, we are going to check it out today. And look at that. There she is. Here we are. It does look good. All right. Let's have a closer look. Oh, yeah. How good does that look? Hey, hey Jeff. Jeff. Kevin. How Hi, are you? Richard. Hello there. What brings you guys here? Look at what you have done here, huh? This is something. What a difference. Yeah. Spectacular. But you got a little bit of work to do, right? A little bit. We got a little bit more work in the driveway. We got a little bit going on in the backyard. The house, we got final details, but we're pretty much there. All right. How about a tour? Sure. All right. All right. We'll catch you guys later. Yeah, we'll catch All right, you guys see later. You. I tell you what, when we first got here, I, I'll be honest, I was wondering, <laughs> like, what were you thinking? It was close, right? right? I mean, it could have been a teardown. It could have just been gone. Yeah. Historic District led that charge. I mean, it took a lot of effort, but the end result is, do you think it looked this good? 130 years ago? Probably. I mean, maybe this is as good as it's ever looked. I mean, yeah. certainly this is as good as this corner's ever looked. I yeah. mean, probably the worst side, right? It was the Northeast. Worst side. Yeah. And, you know, remember this porch was kind of glassed in at some point, but it was still a porch. Yeah. But the fact that that glass existed is what enabled us to make that into living space, which was really valuable. You know, what started with single pane divided lights, we were able to reproduce it with a one piece insulated glass simulated divided lights give them a lot more energy efficiency and and really the same look yeah i can remember right here this corner was you know lots of rot the yeah. whole corner had come down the finial beautiful details yeah but they were literally you had to pick them up we had to pick them up off the ground in order to reproduce it so that it was so close to being gone beyond repair yeah. so and then the siding yeah. i mean all the different features that they had between claps and yep. shingles and a little bit of sawtooth up there and uh fish scale we got the rosettes the clapboard and then the staggered chain. i mean just a little bit of everything the hodgepodge my favorite side of the house right here the bay the windows those windows right there spectacular so much going on and then as you go out front the signature feature or at least the one that grabs you you know from the street is the porch right right you know and almost gone almost lost yeah it was way beyond repair you know ryan pulled it off in one swoop with the wall and there were really no footings no frost protection there was no pressure treated underneath there so you know you, you got to draw the line somewhere and you got to rebuild when it's necessary and that's what was happening i mean some people might bemoan that the original had to go but when you look at how it was rebuilt and the attention to detail you, you just you can't not love it right i right. mean the pillars the brackets the offset colors are spectacular yeah i mean as you look back and you just take in the sunburst which was always there yeah you know but and, now it's back to what it was i think the barge rafters up here on this gable end with yep. all their detail, original, all just original. cleaned up. We, we replicated some of them, sure. but those, you know, were there. Yep. 
And then this Yankee gutter. I, I mean, they made you rebuild it. What'd you think of that? I was scratch my head at first saying, what do we got here? You know, and it took a while to figure out what it did and how it functioned, but it's really remarkable. Really? You're oh, a fan? The, I am. The way the copper comes up and then we're able to terminate through the soffit, you know, to the downspout leaders, it's genius. It shows the, the crown molding and all of that detail on the fascia that would normally be hidden by a gutter. You're a fan? I'm a fan. All right, well, I don't like to bet against the Yankees, but I don't I still don't understand it. I think it's pretty safe to say that the new family is going to return to the porch, spend their time on there like the original family probably did. Uh, I can did. see them sitting in those chairs every night in the summer, watching the traffic come back from the beach. Right. But not in horse and buggy. <laughs> so uh, old house ends right there. All of this was new, which right. was allowed. Yep. You know, sort of changes what the house is, but a, like a perfect match. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about replication of details so if we can replicate on the new you know when you pan back it really looks the same yeah and, and those details are you know the roof shingles continue all the way across but the new shingle work um, well I mean you can see them right windows columns new windows energy efficient but with the same period look as the historic ones right columns to match brackets yep. to match copper for the gutters a little different functionality there um, and then we get the breezeway and then the two-car garage down here and I mean this roof over the two bay doors awesome the yeah. brackets the colors um, you know as you go up the different shingle patterns that you guys replicated the barge rafters in this case these are new yeah but identical to the old identical. ones yep we, we matched the pitch, we matched the size of this gable so that we could reproduce exactly what was here on the other building, make it look like it was always there. The red rosettes, and then those two windows from down here, you would not know that those weren't there yeah. back in the 1880s. Yeah, it's amazing. They look just like it, but they perform a little better. Yeah. Hey, Kristen. Hey, Tom, how are you? I'm very well, up here nice in this beautiful you. master bedroom over the garage. You did a beautiful job here. Thank you. I mean, I look at the nickel gap ceiling. I look at the angles of the room, the crown moldings, the barn door. I like the way the dresser is here. They just fit into this little nook. You don't hit the hair, your head here. Uh, you did a beautiful job. What's your inspiration? Well, you have to remember that we did do this during the pandemic. Oh, so yeah. we would design this space, which is a new space over the garage. We wanted it to be more of a retreat. It's like an escape. So sure. it's away from the kids' rooms. It's it has an office in between, and then you walk into this retreat here. I use neutral palette. We have mirrored side tables here, mm -hmm. a lot of glass elements, softening the curves with the sculptural chandelier there. It's a nice touch, yeah. yeah. And then we have over here, you know, kind of tucked into this nook, as you mentioned, the little whitewash of the dressers that offer plenty of space for Plenty all of the storage and I things mean, like that. I mean, you can get to the drawers. You don't have to worry about it. Normally, if you'd had a wall way in there, it's like, crawl in. That's just great. Very convenient. This is their master closet. It's a little bit of a work in progress, as you can see. Yeah, I can see that. This natural light from this window is really nice in a closet. Women appreciate that, <laughs> as they do shoes. Right? Oh, so yeah. we were able to put the shoe compartments here, but we still have some long hanging, short hanging racks to put in here. Yeah. This will be a shelving area for her sweaters, for pocketbooks, and various... Can't have enough storage. Belts, exactly. So let's take a look at the master bath. Yes. So I continued the design in here to come off of that retreat type of feel by making it more spa-like. Mm. This is really nice, and I like the natural light from the window, and that window matches the same window that's in the closet. Right, and also is a nice reflection of these beautiful three-quarter mounted vessel bowls and the wall-mounted fixtures. Yeah, I like the way these bowls are mounted deeper into the, into the top. You can mount them on top, but this is nice like this. The it effect. doesn't splash as much that way, having those uh, wall-mounted faucets there. Right. In that new antique bronze type of finish, then we have over here this curbless shower. Yeah, this is a nice feature. It has a sloped floor, so there's no curb right here to step over. And there's a linear drain right in the back for all the water to run out. We have our rain heads, speakers, body sprays. You got a steam too, I see. Over here is a nice soaking tub, so at the end of the day, you can get in there. This is a big tub. And I like the little nooches here, and then there's plenty of storage for towels and knickknacks and I like the seashell tile. That is definitely my favorite. That was the inspiration. We started with that. Yeah, very nice. 
This was a fun space to design here. This is for the homeowner's son. We use nice bold colors that are masculine. And this is a great space, you know. This is actually a small bedroom, but because of the slope and the high ceiling, you get a whole new dimension of the space. The son really loves it up there. It's a fun spot for him. Yeah. Well, I gotta say, you did an absolutely beautiful job on the decorations here. I appreciate that, Tom. My pleasure. Pull up a seat. Yeah, you please enjoy? do. <laughs> you know, this is the rule. The bigger the house, the better the house, the smaller the mechanical rule. Is that the <laughs> this rule? This is our mechanical rule. It may be tight, but there's a lot of mechanicals it here. Is, I mean, right. three hot water heaters right. in a row? This is our water heating system. You know, this house has got a big demand. It's got a big tub and it's got body sprays and hand showers. And so you start doing the sizing, you say, how much do we need for what they call the dump load in 20 minutes? If you do it conventionally, you're going to need two big tanks, and those two tanks will have to stay hot all day, every day. So even that, that big peak demand, which is rare, right. you'd have to have the water heated right. on standby, Correct. ready to go. Right. So with these, these are instantaneous gas-fired water heaters, highly efficient. What's different is that these communicate together with each other. And so now, if you open up a hot water faucet in the kitchen and just need a little bit of water, one of these will come on with a modulated flame and satisfy it. But as you need more demand, these talk to one another and constantly send out the right amount. Wait, so is each one of them serving like a zone, a third of the house, or at some point is the water being commingled? No, it's absolutely commingling, talking to one another. So you've got enough power to handle that, really, that crazy demand that you're going to have with the body sprays and filling the tub and everything else, but you don't pay a penalty in operating costs. Right. The alternative is to leave two tanks on and off using up gas every day of the year. This, with this, if you don't run any hot water, you use nothing. So, so a little more up front, because we're buying it times right, three, right, right. but after that. Yeah. yeah, that's the only thing, a little bit more up front, and, and it's really not that much of a premium. You know, it's kind of remarkable to think that 120 years or so ago when the house was built, it didn't have any plumbing at all. Mm -hmm. And now we're talking about, you know, three smart, these things talking yeah, to each other. That's right. Yeah. Plus all the heat, and that's it's right. unbelievable. We've come a long way. All right, 18, cool, 17. thank you. Hey, watch your head. <laughs> So Jen, the landscaping really looks great. Thanks for your great design. Thank you. There's so a now, lot of it, right? Yeah, in the backyard. So we got a shed that is copying some of the elements of the house. We copied the paint. So extra storage there. I love there. the detail you pulled. We got a backup generator here mm -hmm. and then pavers. So this is all limestone and it came from Indiana, That's right. right? So there's a lot of it and therefore it had to be pervious. Right. So all the water drains down. That's right. So that way we didn't work on our lock coverage with, uh, with our drainage. Exactly. So fun fact about this limestone, it came from the same quarry as the Breakers Mansion in Newport, as well as the Superman building in Providence and the Empire State Building. Very, very cool. How about that? Well, this whole pattern is, it's actually interesting too. It's called the Modesso pattern. And so it's a repeat. So you break up the joints. Right. So when it's laid, the guys have a plan. Yep. It doesn't look too organized, but it's random enough. It's really a nice touch. Right. So. We've got the soak pool here. This Remember is that? such an amazing piece. Yeah. This was made in New Hampshire, yep. right? Fabricated there. It's usually between 18,000 and 22,000 pounds. Right. Placed on a truck, driven all the way here, and then they used a crane right. to place it in. The grades had to be perfect, level, so they placed the pool. You only want to place it once, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, we actually don't need a fence because of this cover is safe enough. Plus, it keeps the heat in the water and Right, and if someone were to trip and fall on it, it is strong enough to hold the right. weight of multiple exactly. human beings, actually. Yeah. So we have bulkhead here to the new section of the basement, and we didn't want to just put a regular metal bulkhead, so we dressed it up a little bit. We put an, a custom Epe top on there. I really like that you used the Epe here. This dresses it up perfectly. We went with a tumbled look for the limestone on the veneer here. I really love that it's a different texture than all the flat work. It makes it look rustic and it just it accentuates the area. Right. Perfect. Good. Okay, so over here we have the dining area. It's such a large space, yeah. so you could have so many different little outdoor rooms within right. it. So this is a perfect spot right in the middle. 
Right after the beach. Right after the beach. Back. Line up the kids. Yeah. So over here, remember, uh, Tommy and I did this window. So we made this window in our shop to match the same windows of the house. Mm -hmm. We use mechanical actuators to drive the pistons up. Okay. So this window will actually retract up. We got a countertop here. Right. So this is the outdoor bar and a cabana inside. That is such a great idea. <laughs> Love it. I'm going to steal it from one of my designs. Yeah. So over here, this is a whole outdoor kitchen, right? Yep. We have the trash receptacle, very handy to have in an outdoor kitchen. Next to it, we have a burner. You can put a lobster pot. It's so awesome to have this for an outdoor space. And here is a grill. I believe it's a 38 inch grill and it's gonna be at push of a button, burgers in no time. <laughs> so gas fireplace here on the bottom, click of a button, instant fire. So this is all plumbed in and then up top here, the final feature is this gorgeous pizza oven. Oh my oven. God, look at that, huh? I know. So all you have to do, you have to heat up this bottom surface and then scoot the wood over, put the dough on here. There's a pizza peel, shimmy it in there and then you'll have pizza in just a couple minutes. Wow. Pepperoni? For you, pepperoni. <laughs> Thanks for your help, Jen. Yeah, it was fun. Michael, Cassie and E, oh, how are Cassie. you guys? Hello. Pleasure. How about this? Nice to see you again. Oh, looks right. amazing. Yeah. It looks amazing. We are very We're happy. We're just, yeah, amazed. That's, that's the... Well, I like to see the I smiles. And yeah. it's a far cry from where it was, right? We stood right here about 10 months ago. We were looking at the plans and taking in what a wreck this place was. I know. Especially yeah. this area was a wall right here, and it was a dilapidated porch, side yeah. porch. It was... Broken glass. It was just a. It was a wreck. Yeah, it and it was. Wreck. It was basically two season space. Two you know, now space. we turned it into you know year round space. Yep, and we brought it into the family room, and then this was a door that went into the living room, and we closed this off to have a nice built-ins with a Georgia marble fireplace, and now this is our family room. We so, can so centerpiece of the new family room. This is where you guys will hang out with the kids, take the TV, watch football, all that stuff, right? Absolutely. Indeed. Go yeah. Pats. Entertainment, entertainment center, you got the sound in the wall. I, you could put sound in the ceiling too, right? Two speakers in the ceiling behind uh, the sheetrock and speakers throughout the rest of the house. Drop the ceiling down a little bit to create a box and new entryway, right? So the original door, which was saved, but when you walk through this door, very narrow. Very narrow. There was a wall right here that was extremely narrow and it wasn't conducive to the open floor, floor yeah. plan that we wanted. And the stairway was also very narrow. So we uh, made the stairway a little bit wider, safer, uh, and got rid of this wall right here. Uh, you guys wanted to open floor plan. With the open floor plan. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. New floors went in. I mean, the original floors were, I can remember I there these. was fiberglass insulation stuck between the boards. And now we've got new beautiful wood floors in the herringbone pattern. Takes you right into the kitchen and whoo, hoo, hoo, what a change in here. Look Incredible. At this. Incredible. You remember <laughs> there was a wall across the back right here yeah. with an entrance on the left hand side, another yeah. entrance here. And then we had that uh, mysterious toilet that was next to. <laughs> the sink <laughs> my first toilet in the kitchen i will give you that no yeah. doubt about it that was unusual that was uh convenient yeah convenient and so again wide open right wide and, open and Cassidy, space this is your space you it. said you wanted a big wide open absolutely this island is nice and big for a lot of entertaining that we do lots of lunches and dinners sitting at this island nice big open space Big exactly. island is an understatement. Yeah, it's, it's, huge. A, it's a very <laughs> it big a island. island. But obviously a well thought out kitchen, right? So we've got the side by side oversized fridge freezer right here. And then we've got the uh, high end stove, six burners, Tommy and Riley actually put in the custom hood, Looks wood, beautiful. which is gorgeous, right? Yep, we did the uh, Calcutta gold backsplash to match the uh, countertops uh, on the side and as well as the island. That's the quartz material. Yep, the Calcutta Gold quartz. Inlay, inset doors for the cabinets, which is terrific. Much better sink right here. Oversized, upgraded the hardware, yeah. <laughs> some windows as well. Absolutely. Big improvement. And the island base cabinets, a darker, different color with a little bit of that splash of gold right there, right? Yep, yes. it matches the hood and the bar area that's over there. Yeah, so we got some appliances in there. And then this, my personal favorite right here. So we had the old outhouse, literally an outhouse yeah. attached to the, the building. Um, and what you guys decided was you wanted to use it, have the door look like it was cabinet doors, but 
It's actually a hidden swinging door Voila. when you go in there. Love it. Pantry? A pantry. <laughs> Look at that smile, huh? She always wanted a pantry. Oh, always wanted a pantry. Much better than an outhouse. <laughs> a pantry is much better than an outhouse in the kitchen. Uh, more of the appliances, so coffee maker, we got the drink fridge right there, back door, and then again, your guys' idea, right? You wanted a little bar area yeah. for entertaining. And then another great feature over here, the windows, this little bay area here. I mean, original to the house, lovingly restored by Jeff's team, the stained glass. I don't they know, look like great. 25 over there. <laughs> don't they? They look, oh, oh, the kids are here. All right. <laughs> Julian Lucci, did you guys see your rooms? Did you yeah. cut the house? Yeah. Thumbs up? Yeah. Uh, thumbs up. Any favorites? Loft. The loft. I like loft. your loft too. I, I would wish I had a loft. And the rest of the gang is here. Oh, quite a quite a project. Huh? Unbelievable. You know, and actually, Jen, it turned out to be a fair amount of landscaping for this little seaside cottage. I know isn't it? it's a really small lot with a huge wish list, but we managed to fit in quite a bit. And it's been tricky with the yep. COVID, and yep. you know, everyone being respectful of each other, but everyone worked together, and Great. we got it Good in. Good job. Yeah, I know this is always an exciting time for me when I get to turn the keys over to the homeowner. It's a big release and a relief. But this is special for you because with all that's been going on with the COVID and, you know, the restrictions for the work area, it's been a hard job. Yeah, yeah and I, I have to hand it to the team. I mean, the guys and the girls did a phenomenal job. Everybody stepped up, played by the rules, and, you know, got it done. So yeah, you, have a, you have a good crew. Thank yeah. you. You have a good crew. You, you, you get the hang of it, Jeff. <laughs> and Michael, Cassian, e, kids, I hope you guys are happy. This is your new home, so welcome Very home. Very happy. Hopefully you love Very it. Very happy. We love it. We love it. It's exciting. We're thankful Jeff and his team for making it happen. This old house, we appreciate it. All right. Well, like I Thank said, you welcome home. Thank you. And we will be back with a brand new project. It's a 1905 three-decker, a couple blocks from our very first project back in 1979. It had a fire. The homeowner's been out for a year, but we've decided to help her get back in. So for all of us here at this old house, we'll check that out next time. Until then, I'm Kevin O'Connor for this old house. All right, guys, welcome home. Next time on This Old House. Today we're working on our own triple decker. The homeowner um, has been living in it for almost 40 years. Unfortunately, just over a year ago, the house had a fire. I looked out the kitchen window and I could see the flames from this house blazing up. So we just grabbed what we could and just ran out. I can only imagine, it's gotta be awful. I've never been in a house where I'm in the house and the house is on fire.